Have you ever talked yourself out of trying without even opening your mouth? If you did, it was because your thoughts defeated you. How you think about yourself, your situation, and your future can either make you or break you. Today on Faith Builders, you can change your mind. It is important for you to take control of the thoughts that are going through your mind. It is important for you to investigate them and find out if they line up with the Word of God. If you are born again, if you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and you are trying to live the Word of God in your everyday life, if you have his spirit on the inside of you and your mind is still thinking with that old defeated thoughts, then you are going to have frustration every day of your life. Perhaps you're watching me today and you say, Michelle, I know what you're talking about. I have frustration because I see what the Word of God says. I see what God says He wants to be in my life. And then when I go to live my daily life, my thoughts keep disqualifying me and repositioning me over here in the place of lack, over here in the place of distress, over here in the place of frustration, because your thoughts have to be renewed and lined up with the Word of God. You have to change your mind. Now, when you read the book of Ephesians chapter 2, you see a before and after picture. God is showing us a before and after picture by saying, before you got saved, this is how you lived. This is how you thought. This is how you act. But now that you're in Christ Jesus, this is the life that you get to live. These are the thoughts that you get to think. This is the, the power you get to walk in. I want to take you there. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1 says, And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You and I, we were all dead in trespass and sin. We were all born in sin, shaping in iniquity. But Jesus came and prepared for us the way, to the new and the living way to approach the throne, to come to God and to receive that forgiveness of sins. And he gave us a new life. And then it goes on to say, say here that it's showing the before and after picture. In times past, you used to walk according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. In times past, you did what, what just seemed natural to you. In times past, before you walked with God, before you were born again, before you were saved, if you lied, you didn't feel too bad about it. You know, you tried to hide it. You tried to cover it up. But you you, you lied because in you was, was, was the nature to lie. It just, it just seemed good to you. It seemed like it fit for you. But now in Christ Jesus, the spirit of truth abides in you. So we're seeing the before and after picture. You used to live like this. You used to not have anything to stop that old flesh nature in you. And then verse 3 says among whom we all had our conversation, our behavior in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Think back to the time before you received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Think back to that time. You did whatever came into your mind. You were led by your thoughts. You didn't have a born-again spirit to lead you. You didn't have the voice of God or His Word leading you. You were led by what you felt like doing. And that's why advertising has been so... so uh, um, uh, productive in people's lives is because they see the, the image of something and they say, I want that. Or they, they, they watch that commercial and they suddenly have a desire to go get that thing. You notice it's the beer commercials that come on during the football games that make people's mouths water. Why? Even, even if you're saved and born again, you remember what it was like to drink that beer because the thought is now producing an image in your mind to remember as that beer is pouring out of that, of that can into that glass and now your thoughts go towards that. But now that you're born again, you stop those thoughts and you say, I don't think like that anymore. But in times past, you were led by the desires of your flesh and the, the imaginations of your heart. You were led. One translation says, the Amplified says, our cravings which were dictated by our imaginations. Now I want to talk to you for a minute about how this works. 
works. Because a lot of times we look at people who are caught in addiction, we look at people who are caught in a bondage of drug addiction or alcoholism, and we say, I don't understand what's wrong with you. Why don't you just stop? Well, it's a little bit deeper than that because they didn't just start. It didn't, they didn't become full-blown addicted the very first time. It took a consistent thinking about it and then acting on it and thinking about it and then acting on it and thinking about it and then acting on it. And I see when we see in, in uh, Corinthians that it teaches about the thought processes. It says that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations and taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is the thought process in, in, in reverse, because in actuality, we see that we can take the thought captive. If we don't take the thought captive, then it becomes an imagination. For instance, that person who is trying to quit doing cocaine or methamphetamine, they are trying to quit, but they've been working all week and then they're boss gives them their paycheck on Friday morning. They're there on Friday morning. They get their paycheck. They put it in their pocket and that paycheck starts talking to them. It starts saying, hey, 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 what if, what if you cash this paycheck? And then, and then that they think about it and it, it continues until it becomes an imagination. And then an imagination is a plan. It says, let's go cash the paycheck at such and such market. And then we'll go take $25 and go get a hit of drugs and nobody will ever know. Why? Because I've got a plan. I've got an imagination. Now I've, I've thought out where I'm going to drive to. I've thought out where I'm going to cash the check. I've thought about how I can get to the drug man's house. I've thought all this plan out. I didn't take the thought captive and it became an imagination. And because that imagination now has a little bit stronger power, the more I act on it and the more I let those imaginations continue, it becomes a stronghold of addiction until that person loses control of their ability to say no, until that drug now has authority over their will and it tells them what they will do, what they will spend their money on and what they will, they, they will do with their time. That has started as a thought. If we learn how to use the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God and we take those thoughts captive, we bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. We bring everything that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and we take it captive. Think about how the enemy used his thoughts. He said, I will, I will exalt myself above the throne of God. I will make myself higher than God. That's the trick. That's the plan of the enemy. That's what he tries to do in your life. He come and he says, he, he comes and he says, cancer is stronger than God's ability to heal you. And you get, you get to meditating and thinking about how many people you know that had cancer and died. And you get to thinking about how, how sick those people were before they died. And then you read the medical journals and you, you read the, the, the newspapers about, about how cancer has, is, is so prevalent and how powerful cancer is. And the more you think about it and the more you meditate on it, that cancer now has exalted itself above the knowledge of God in your life because now it says, well, you know, I know that the Bible says by his stripes, I am healed. I know that the Bible says he takes sickness far from the midst of me. I know the Bible says he will heal all of my diseases, but cancer. Now what's happened in your mind, in your mind, the thought of cancer has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Maybe it's in finances. Maybe the situation that you're facing is a financial situation. And in your mind, you have thought about how much money you owe people. In your mind, you've thought about how long it would take you to raise that much money, to earn that much money. And you look at your situation and you think, there's no way. And the more you meditate on it and the more the bill collectors call you and the more nasty letters you get in the mail and the more that you think about it and meditate on it and receive all this information coming into your mind, the more you exalt that financial problem against, above the knowledge of God, 
that that knowledge, that thought is it's in your mind that you're defeated. You're defeated in your mind before you ever even get any farther in the situation. You've already been defeated in your mind. Why? Because you can't see the word of God because you're so focused on the problem. And the word of God says that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The word of God says that we're supposed to become to know this grace and, and bound in this grace. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. We see the word of God that says, I will increase you more and more. We see the word of God that says, if I give, it shall be given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together. But we've spent so much time looking at and thinking on the problem that this seems insignificant and the problem seems very big and very uh, 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 it has too much authority in your life. It has too much dominion in your life. What is supposed to have the, the bottom line authority in your life? The Word of God. And so the thoughts that you're thinking have to line up with the Word of God. You have to take the weapons that God has given you, and you have to take every thought captive. And any thought that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. See, the Bible says, let God be true, and everything else is a lie. Everything else compared to the Word of God, God's Word is truth. John, in the book of John 10, it says, Thy Word is truth. The Word of God is truth. And so it is the final authority in our life, and we have to change our mind and make our mind focus on what He said so that we do not fulfill the desire of the flesh. What is the desire of the flesh when you're in a fight, when you're in a, 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 an attack of the enemy? Well, the desire of the flesh is to give up. The desire of the flesh is to feel sorry for yourself. The gloom, despair, and agony. Why is this happening to me, God? Oh, my soul. Why are you disquieted within me? You're sitting there focusing on the hurt. You're focusing on the trouble. You're focusing on the pain. And in the middle of that, your flesh wants to give up. Your flesh wants to throw in the proverbial towel. Your flesh wants to say, it's not worth it. I'll just give up. I'll just go back to doing it a different way. I'm not, it's not working to do it God's way. It's not working. I'm giving it. It's not working for me. Never say that. Never say that. You have just taken the thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and given voice to it. Never say what the doubt is, is trying to make you think. You've got to take the word of God and you've got to defeat those thoughts that are coming against you. Think about how in the Gulf War there was uh, the enemy would attack with a Scud missile, and the the armed forces, the Americans would would re re respond with a Patriot missile. And see, that Scud missile would come, and the Patriot missile would hit it in the air, and it would disintegrate. It would explode. The Scud missile never hit its target. The Scud missile never landed and caused any destruction. And that's what happens when you take God's Word and you put it in your mouth and defeat the thoughts, because you cannot defeat thoughts with thoughts. You cannot control thoughts with thoughts. Jesus, when the enemy came at him and the enemy was trying to launch his Scud missiles against Jesus Christ, with his thoughts, if you're the son of God, if you're really God, Jesus didn't think it away. He opened his mouth and said, it is written. And that's what you have to do. You have to take God's word and you have to combat those thoughts. You have to defeat those thoughts and you have to exalt the word of God above what you're thinking, above what your situation is trying to make you think. The word of God is truth and you can rely on it. The word of God will never let you down. The word of God will never deceive you. But your situation situation will deceive you. Your circumstance will deceive you. I'm speaking to somebody right now that needs to change your mind. You need to make a change. You need to determine right now today, I am going to change my mind. I'm going to take the Word of God, and I'm going to think what God thinks about my situation. I'm not going to think what my circumstance is telling me to think. I'm not going to think about dying. I'm not going to think about leaving my children without their mother. I'm not going to think about losing my grandchildren to drug addiction. I'm not going to think about 
about losing my marriage. I'm not going to think about going bankrupt and losing my house. I'm not going to think about that because that's the situation. And if I meditate on the situation, it's going to become the strongest, most authoritative thing in my life. But instead, I'm going to go to the Word of God and I'm going to renew my mind by His Word and I'm going to take God's thoughts and I'm going to refuse the thoughts of my circumstance and my situation. And I'm going to think the truth. I'm going to think on what God said. God's Word is truth. And so therefore I choose to think great shall be the peace of my children. I think I choose to think that all things are going to work together for good in my life. I choose to think that I have peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. I choose to think what God says and not think what my circumstance is trying to make me think. You know, there are things that happen in your life that are trying to change your mind. And if they change your mind and you begin seeing things from the circumstances perspective, you're going to be listening to Goliath. Goliath was standing on the battlefield and he was doing all the talking and his words were going out and it was his words, his thoughts, the words produced thoughts in the mind of those soldiers that made them quiver, that made them afraid and he hadn't hit anybody yet. He hadn't attacked anybody yet. He was just talking and your circumstances just talking to you. Quit letting Goliath talk to you. Quit sitting there and listening to your circumstance say what it's saying. It's time for you to renew your mind. Now Ephesians goes on and I want to share with this with you in Ephesians chapter 4 because it's important for us to see that this is our responsibility. This is not God's responsibility to come change my mind. You can't get in the prayer line on Sunday and ask your pastor to lay hands on you and say, Pastor, I want you to pray that my mind be renewed right now. And Pastor, lay his hands on you and suddenly, oh, the, 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 the glory comes in and the lights come down on you and now you have a renewed mind. It doesn't work that way. Wouldn't it be great if it was that easy? No. You have to go to the Word every day, and you have to cleanse your mind. You have to renew your mind. You have to throw out those old thoughts and take the new ones, because nobody can make this happen for you, and it's not God's responsibility to come down and renew your mind. He gave you everything you need. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, and let's begin in verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that from now on, from henceforth, you do not walk as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. He said, from now on, you're born again. You've got the equipment of God. You've got the ability of God working in you. Do not continue to walk like people outside of God's covenant in the vanity or the uselessness of their mind. He said, they have their understanding darkened. They have been alienated from the life of God because of their lack of understanding. The King James uses the word of ignorance, but ignorance means lack of knowledge. So listen, because their understanding is darkened, that they are blinded, their perception is blinded. That's not you. You have been enlightened. The lights are on in your house. Their lights might be off, but the lights are on in your house, alienated from the life of God. They can't live the life of God because their lack of knowledge. But you've been given that knowledge. You can live the life of God. You can have His peace in your home. You can have the peace of God in your finances, the prosperity, the blessing of God in your finances. You can have have health in your body. You can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can have the life of God because you have the knowledge of God. You can renew your mind and walk in the light of His Word. It says that these people are blind in their heart, that they are past feeling. They've given themselves over into lasciviousness. But it says, but you have not so learned in Christ. It, you didn't learn to live this way in Christ. If so be that you have heard him and you've been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, you need to put off concerning the former behavior, the former conversation, the old man. Who puts off the old man? You put off the old man. I put off the old man. The old Michelle, the Michelle Steele BC before Christ is put off. That is our responsibility to be renewed in our mind and to put off the old self. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It is our responsibility to be renewed in our mind, to put off the old me and to put on the new me. That is not God's 
place. It's our place. And when we do this, we are able to walk in all that he has for us. We're able to continue in his plan and in his purpose when we put off the old and put on the new. You've got to put on the new man by putting the word of God in your heart. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. The moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, at that time, your mind still has all of the incorrect information you've been downloading into it all these years. Your mind is filled with, with wrong responses. Your mind is filled with hit them instead of love them. You know, your mind, your, your automatic response of the flesh is to be angry and to hold a grudge. But God says, be angry and sin, and sin not. You can't hold that grudge. If you're angry with someone, you can't take it out on them. You can't verbally abuse them or physically abuse them. Why? That's the old man. You've got to put that old man off and you've got to put on the new man by being renewed in the spirit of your mind. By being renewed in your mind, you are able to, to change. In Romans chapter 12, it used this. It says, be ye transformed by renewing your mind. And that word transformed is the same word that we use to describe how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. It's the same creature but it's a different creature. It went into that process, a caterpillar. And you may come to God and, and you receive Jesus as Lord and your life may look like the life of a caterpillar. But when you begin taking the word and you put the word in your heart and in your mouth and you begin to let the word of God change your mind, you're being transformed. You're being metamorphosized. And that word of God is becoming like a cocoon and it's wrapping you up in the word of God. And it won't be long till the word of God has so transformed you that now you are that butterfly and you're flying above the circumstance. You're not limited to that condition on the ground anymore. You're not stuck in that situation, but now you have wings to fly above it and you can see things from a different perspective. You can see from the high up perspective that God has given us. He said in Isaiah chapter 55, take my thoughts, not your thoughts, take my ways, not your ways, because my ways are higher. My ways are the highway. If you want to live the high life, you've got to get God's thoughts. You've got to get God's thoughts and you've got to begin thinking them because your mind is like an engine and the fuel that you put in it is going to determine the mobility in your life. And if you are fueling yourself with fear and doubt and anxiety and unbelief and worry and stress, then your engine is going to sputter along through life. But honey, when you take the word of God, it is like the high octane fuel you put it in the engine of your mind and you'll begin to dream God dreams. You'll begin to see God visions. You'll begin to see things from God's perspective. And the circumstance will come and tell you you're going to go under, but you've already seen and you've been renewed in your mind by the word of God and you said, I can't go under. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm always going over. I'm never going under. The power of God is in me and he causes me to triumph. He makes me more than a conqueror through him that loved me. And you see things from the word of God perspective. You see yourself in the word. You see yourself walking in the word. He told Joshua in Joshua 1, 8, meditate in this word day and night so that you may observe to do it. That means so that you can see yourself doing it. It's time for you to change your mind. Pay attention. My announcer has some important information. You don't want to miss it. The Mind and the Mouth is a four-part CD series designed to provide a strategy for self-control in your thinking and speaking. God's Word puts the responsibility on us to take thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ, and Michelle Steele will help you keep your mind and your mouth governed by God's Word. You can purchase this series for $20 by calling 1-888-901-8242 or by sending a check or money order to Post Office Box 452, DeSoto, Kansas, 66018. This product offer is also available online at www.michellesteelministries.com. Today's broadcast is available for $12. Please include the broadcast number 1037. Today we've talked about changing our mind. And the most important thing for this to work in your life is to first of all, allow Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. 
He's the one who gives you the power to change your mind. He's the one who gives you the power to live that transformed life. And it begins with a change of heart first. And that change of heart takes place when we receive what Jesus has done for us. Because Jesus, when he died on the cross, he was doing that for you. He died on the cross and he shed his blood. He poured his blood out on Calvary's cross to pay for the sin that was in your life and in my life. And when we receive that as our substitute, when we receive his action, his substitution on the cross and say he died for me so that I could live. The Bible says he became sin who knew no sin so that you could become righteous in him. The righteousness of God in Christ is yours today by receiving the Lord. Open your heart today and pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name because I need change in my life. I receive what Jesus has done for me. I receive his blood and I ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I believe he died for me on the cross and I believe he rose again from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of God. If you prayed that prayer with me, if you have opened up your heart and you've received what Jesus has done in your behalf, your life will never be the same. I want to hear what God's doing. Would you contact me, write my office, let me know how God is changing your life and transforming your life because the, the power of God is here to save. He is here to set us free. He is here to give us a life that is worth living and you can have that life and walk in it. Remember to build your faith and to frame your world by the Word of God. God designed partnership to be a way to connect His people for His overflow of blessing. In Luke 5, we see that Simon Peter allowed Jesus to use his fishing boat for the preaching of the gospel. Afterwards, Jesus blessed Peter with an overflow of fish. There were so many fish that Simon Peter had to call for his partners. Look at Luke 5, 7 in the Amplified Bible. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Peter had partners that were already connected to him. They'd been fishing all night with Peter. They had worked alongside Peter and helped him. When the abundance and the overflow occurred, that connection of partnership brought the blessing into their lives. The blessing is already flowing. Through partnership, you can connect. When you partner with Michelle Still Ministries, you participate in the work this ministry is doing. You become a partner in sharing the gospel with prisoners and people fighting addictions. Your partnership is sending this faith-building message to speak a word to the weary in due season. When you partner with Michelle Still Ministries for $25 a month, you will receive a monthly partner packet with CD or DVD TV teachings and my Faith Builders newsletter filled with articles and stories of inspiration. Also, I give special attention to prayer for my partners. I believe our connection is a spiritual connection. There are three ways that you can make your, your connection. You can partner online by visiting my webpage, michellestillministries.com, and click on the partnership button. This will allow you to sign up to have your donation automatically deducted each month. Or you can call our toll-free number and use your credit card or debit card. You can also send a check or money order to the address listed there on your screen. I am honored to be in ministry with you. Let's build faith and frame our world by the Word of God.